everybody. Yes, it is the fourth Wednesday of April. Amen. We are here at a Bible study at Christian Freedom Ministries, Copper's Cove, Texas. If you're in the area, come on out. We're about to get started. Amen. Amen. If we can all please stand, let's go to God in prayer. For he is first and foremost in everything that we do. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Father God, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, for being God all by yourself, Lord God. For blessing us the way that you do. For loving us, Lord God. Father God, we say thank you. Father God, right now, we are thanking you most of all for your Holy Spirit, Thank Lord God. You, Lord. As he leads and guides us, Lord God, to learn more of you, Father God. Have your way, Holy Spirit. We surrender to you right now. Saturate me from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. Filling me up to the point of overflow so that we all may get an understanding of your word. So that we are able to apply it to our lives. And most of all, share it with others so that they too may get the good news. Yes, Lord. Lord God, we love you and we praise you in Jesus' holy name. Jesus amen. Name. Amen. 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 So this month, the month of April, we have been learning about what? Activate, Activate your, power. your power. Activate your power. I got a few questions as we go forward, so we're going to see if we've been paying attention, amen? Who gives you your power? Holy, Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit, yes! The Holy Spirit gives you your power. Yes! By way of? Yes! Look at your Holy Spirit! By way of Jesus Christ, amen? If Jesus Christ had not went up? Mm -hmm. Could we have the Holy Spirit? No. 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 Did He had to leave yep. mm -hmm. so that we may receive our gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 The gift that you have of the Holy Spirit is it by anything that you've done? No. 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 <laughs> is it anything that you can do to make your gift double? No. 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 no? But there are some things that you can do to enjoy your gift. Amen. 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 There are some things that you can do to enjoy your gift while here on this earth. Amen. 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 While here on this earth, while we're walking around and breathing and living a good life. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Because that is what the Holy Spirit gives us. God gives us a good life. That's right. Amen. Yeah. And we're able to live that by way of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Because he leads and guides us in the way that God would have us to go. Amen. 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 The Holy Spirit. Is the Holy Spirit a person, place, or thing? Person. 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 Yes, the Holy Spirit is a person. It is a person because of what? It makes up what? He makes up the Trinity. He makes up, correct. He makes up the Trinity, right? Trinity, the part, third part of the Trinity. Trinity being who? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen? So he is a person. Remember, when we said that Holy Spirit, we don't reference God as it. We don't reference Jesus as it. The same thing with Holy Spirit. He, he has a name, Holy Spirit. Jesus has a name, Jesus, God, Holy Spirit. Amen? So the Holy Spirit gives power to those whom believe. True. <laughs> yes. The Holy Spirit gives power to whom, to those whom believe. Amen. If you have doubt, the Holy Spirit can't dwell where doubt dwells. Amen. 
He will not. He will not. Amen? Amen. Second Timothy, let's go there. Ma'am, I'll be reading the NLT. Second Timothy 3, 16 and 17 is what we'll read. Amen? Amen. Amen? It says, all scripture is inspired by God and is, use, and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. Amen. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses him to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. Amen? Amen. So by just this scripture alone, you can see that the Holy Spirit truly cares about us. Mm -hmm. God truly cares for us because he's given us the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us. He's also given us the Holy Spirit to correct us. You correct whom those you love. No different with parents. Children don't always understand it because you want to know why you're getting them spanking. But it's so you don't constantly make this same mistake over and over again. It's a correction out of love. Correct? Y'all understand that? Amen. And that's the same thing with the Holy Spirit. It's not to just point finger at you. Oh, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. No, it is to bring those things to our sight, our foresight, so that we can see them. So that those things will depart from us as we get closer to a relationship with Christ. So that we no longer have the desire to do those things anymore. Amen? Amen. Amen. Go ahead, sir. You know, the scripture tells us that, that uh, he loves he chastises those who we love, mm -hmm. or he corrects those who we love. And that's what it means. You know, a lot of people think when they hear that, they think it means, well, God beats us. <laughs> God's not beating you. He's not, he doesn't do that. What he does is he corrects you. He gives you the proper guidance that you need to get on the right path. He doesn't come down to beat you uh, and abuse you. And, and make things happen to you. For some reason, that's what, what a lot of people, when they hear this that scripture, mm -hmm. that's what they seem to hear. You know, because they think about their upbringing and how many beatings they got. And they think that, okay, well, you know, uh, we're talking about God chastising his, his people. That means he's going to punish us. No. He's going he's gonna to take things away from us. He's going to beat us. No, that's not, that's not who God is at all. It simply means that those whom he loves, he corrects. Mm -hmm. And if he's correcting you, then that means he knows how to put you on the right path. Just like your GPS. Your GPS, you know, you can miss your turn, but then it'll, it'll recalculate uh, the route, right? Mm -hmm. And so what it's doing is correcting you. It's putting you back on the right path. And that's what God does for us. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. And doing that correction for us is all in love. It's all in love. It's so that we don't, so that we're not here on earth living a life of misery. We're not here on earth living a life of hell. Not having the benefits of which God has given us. Not reaping the rewards of being a believer of Christ. That's what that correction is for. It's all out of love. It's to benefit you. It's to benefit me. Amen? Amen. And yes, it does work for the will of God who ha he has his purpose in us. But his purpose is so that we may live and not die. Amen. Amen. 
that we may prosper as our soul prospers. Amen. 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 And you were saying something about how you were saying how God, um, he, you know, as we fill ourselves with the word, what happens is God will end up taking those desires away from us, those things that we're doing that's against God. And that's explained really in, in second, what is it? Let me think about it. Philippians, I think it's 13 and 2, or 2 and 13. Let's see if I can pull it up. Amen. Yeah. Okay. Philippians 2 and 13. And I guess I'll... I'll read it from the New Living Translation. Mm -hmm. And it reads like this. For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. Mm -hmm. So how is God working in us? By way of his Holy Spirit. That's right. Mm -hmm. And you know, a lot of people think, you know, just because they come to Christ, well, I came to Christ, so all of a sudden, you know, now that I gave my life to Christ tonight, I'm not going to smoke weed tomorrow. No, that's and then you go out there and you smoke weed, and then you feel like you failed, and then you feel like you're not worthy. And that's not how God wants, that's not how God wants this to work at all. What's, what's going to happen is, God is, the more you fill yourself with God, the more you fill yourself with his word, because remember, back in Genesis, the Holy Spirit was waiting on what? The word. With the word. He was so waiting on the word. Moved. So the more you fill yourself with this word, the Holy Spirit is going to activate them things that's going to give you the desire and the power to do what pleases God. So you end up, just like you say, you end up um, just losing the desire to do, to do those other things. Mm -hmm. That's why I can't nobody come up to you telling you that you shouldn't do this, and thou shalt not, thou shalt not. You know, it amazes me because a lot of the people that's coming up to you telling you, thou shalt not, they already did. Mm -hmm. And so we have to be mindful of how God operates through his spirit in us. Mm -hmm. And he's the one who's help, helping to put us back on the path. I tell people, I say, you know what? It is not my job to, it's not my job to change a person. You know, some reason people think it's a pastor's job to change people. I said, it's not my job to change anyone. My job is to give them the word and let the Holy Spirit change them. Amen. And this scripture here proves it's the Holy Ghost that does that change. Amen. 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 And it's funny you went there because I just had that conversation with my cousin on the drive. You know, he was, he's made some change, uh, some mistakes. He's made some wrong choices. But he goes home and everybody wants to criticize him and tell him how he's done this wrong. And, and that's why he got, because he's no longer in the military due to some, you know, some choices that he's made. But like I explained to him, I said, you know, I'm going to love you regardless. I'm going to love you and I'm going to help lead and guide you and give you some encouragement by the way of God's word through this. I said, they can't tell you that you're wrong when they made the same mistakes. That's right. I said people often forget they have they did things too. Mm -hmm. And just because they didn't get caught doesn't mean they didn't do them. That's right. Because that be the thing. You get caught and then they want to, oh, oh, you bad. You shouldn't have did this. You wrong. You going to hell. But you just did the same thing. Just because you didn't get caught don't mean that my sin is greater than your sin. <laughs> it is the exact same. And that's the best thing about the Holy Spirit working in us. Because when we allow the Holy Spirit to work in us, when he moves truly within us, we don't have time to pass judgment. Mm -mm. We don't have time to try to condemn somebody and tell them everything that they've done is wrong. We just love them, encourage them, uplift them, and let them know it's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. Dust yourself off and keep on moving in God. Amen? Amen. Go ahead, Elder. I just wanted to talk about the corrections, 
how it show it proves that we are God's legitimate children. Mm -hmm. And it says in Hebrews 12 and 8, if God doesn't discipline you as he does all of his children, it means that you are illegitimate and are not really his children at all. Amen. 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 And we are. We are his children, those that believe. Those that believe. Those that believe are his children. Amen. I think people get hung up on that word discipline. They because mm -hmm. they get caught. I'm sorry, and I, I know it's shining to see you. Uh, <laughs> but they get caught. They get caught on that word discipline, and they think you know obedience because they've been you know so many people have been teaching under the wrong covenant for so long, and so now people look back at the Old Testament, the Mosaic co covenant. Mm -hmm. Whereas people actually got, uh, they either got killed, you know, stoned to death. There was some type of action that was taken against them to physically hurt them. You understand? Whereas people see, they hear that word and they think, okay, well, you know what, God, is, he's going to, he's going to hit me. He's going to take me out. He's going to, or he's going to take something from me or he's going to make something bad happen to me. And that's not what it's talking about at all. It's simply talking about correction. It's talking about guidance. All right, that's what it's talking about, correction. Because you, you guide those and you correct those who you love. If you don't love them, then you don't correct them. You just let them go. All right, keep playing on the train tracks. I don't know, you know how. They ain't got nothing to do with me. They ain't got nothing to do with me. You see what I'm saying? I apologize. Right, okay, go ahead, Elder. At both times, Wait, I went to back to the same place I was going. It's just the only thing I was going to say different from what he was saying is that I was just going to use conviction and condemnation because religion mixes up the two words. They, they think the condemning is the conviction when it's not conviction. It's exactly what he was saying to where the Holy Spirit, where God has already been talking to you about it mm -hmm. and stuff. And then when you hear the word being presented, it convicts you. As it's as it said in um, 2 Timothy 3 and 16 that you was reading, mm -hmm. That it teaches us and shows us when we're doing wrong. That's that conviction, because you know that you something just wasn't feeling right. And then when you hear that word, you're like, okay, that's what it was. That wasn't feeling right. That's what I need to change. It ain't the uh, pastor telling me, hey, you have that. That's, that's when the condemnation comes in. You need to change this. You need to get right. You need and exactly as you said. And they're doing the exact same thing, but they're trying to tell you that you gotta change. No, conviction is what the Holy Ghost uses and what God uses. And that's what it what it's doing is just it, it makes you lose that desire. Mm -hmm. It's just God has already been talking to you. It's like a confirmation. It's like a confirmation. The word gets presented, and you're like, oh man, that was for me. That was for me. That was something that I that I knew it didn't feel right, and that is something that I need to work on. God help me. Help me, help me to uh, work on this because I can't do it on my own. You know, I've been in uh plenty of services and I've heard a lot of people talk about but the pastor must was in my window. He was talking straight to me. He was by way of the Holy Spirit. That was a word for you at that moment. That was something that you need to hear. Because when you said, some told me I should have did that. But you didn't listen to the some told me. Then you come to service and the pastor tells you. By way of Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. It's so that that's God correcting us right there at that moment. Amen. Right there in that moment, he's correcting us and telling us, get back on path. Get back on the right path. Amen. 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 This is good. It makes me think back to my very first time I gave a Bible study here. At, I think it was Bible study or Sunday school. It was Bible study. And I remember the title, When God Says No. <laughs> An and I word. remember giving my study, pastor was like, God never says no. In my head on the left side, you know, because it's the left side. I was like, he is just so rude. <laughs> he is just so rude. This will be the last time I get up here. But I had to go back as with growth, go back and say, hey, he wasn't trying to be rude. He was trying to give me guidance on what the proper way to say it. God never says no. 
It's yay and amen. Yes, that's we it. And that um that correction is to make you better. It's to make you stronger. If you're gonna be representing Jesus, you need to represent him right. So when he when God corrects us, we shouldn't get offended or feel insulted. We should take it as a compliment that he loves me so much that he doesn't want me to make a mistake. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Jeff. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and it, this whole thing takes us to, like, uh, you know how people uh, use the scriptures, well, what's, what's done in the dark will be revealed in the light. Mm -hmm. You hear that? Yeah. You ever heard that? Mm -hmm. That's scripture, right? The thing is, people take, take it out of context. And they think because, you know, what's, what's done in the dark, what you've been hiding, all of a sudden it's going to be revealed before everybody. It's not what it's talking about at all. What's done in the dark, if it's something that you you doing and you got comfortable with it, that lasciviousness, that means you can't put the brakes on, you're just comfortable with it now, the Holy Spirit will reveal it to you that, hey, look, this is, I'm, I'm, I'm the light. Jesus said he's the what? The light, right? The Holy Spirit reveals it to you. Was done in the dark. He reveals it to you. He reveals it by by light, right? So that you can again be corrected and put on the right path. You know, an alcoholic can't be helped until he admits he's an alcoholic. That's correct. And it's the same way. A lot of us we can't be helped if we're comfortable in doing something that we shouldn't be doing. We have to finally get to the place where the Holy Ghost reveals to us the light. Amen. Mm -hmm. What's done in the dark will be revealed in the light. Mm -hmm. It's revealed in the light now. Mm -hmm. That what's going on, now it can be changed. Now it can be fixed because I see myself now. I see the problem now because it's revealed in the light. Whereas a lot of people thought that meant that God was going to stand you in front of the church like the whore in the Bible <laughs> and have everybody stoned. No. And that's not how God, God has never done nothing like that. Jesus, you know, when you look at Jesus' life, he has never pulled anybody out in front of anybody, put people's business out. The Pharisees are the only ones to do that. The Pharisees and the Sadducees, they're the only ones to do that. And today, in a lot of churches here in the United States, we have a lot of Pharisees and Sadducees bringing people up, putting their business out in the street. You know, I, I used to be a part of those lines where People would come up to the so-called prophet or the person standing up front, and he's revealing everything about you to everybody. That ain't right. No. And we get caught up in that mess, like, oh, he's so holy. He ain't holy. Where did, where did you see Jesus doing that to anybody? Nowhere. Nowhere. Jesus is not doing that because anything that got to deal with you, Jesus, the Bible's Listen, the Holy Spirit is a perfect gentleman. Yes. And he has that tact. What's going on is between you and God. Amen. And he'll let you know exactly what's going on. And he'll give you that warning to let you know that, hey, look, if you keep continue down on this path, it's going to cause you some problems. So he reveals it to you, but he doesn't reveal it out to everybody else. And so, you know, we, we really have to catch ourselves from running behind religion, running behind people calling themselves prophets and everything else, all right, because uh, and they're putting your business out. Oh, yeah, you, you, you've been involved in witchcraft, and, and, and this is why this is happening in your household. And, you know, people think that's holy, and they run behind folks like that. I know. I used to be one of those running behind people like that. And then the Lord finally grabbed hold of me and showed me, well, where did Jesus do that? He didn't. When did Paul do that? He didn't. he didn't. You know, the only time Paul did some rebuke to my publicly was when he rebuked Peter. And that's because Peter was trying to make people fall from grace. Amen? Amen. 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 Go, go ahead, Uncle. <laughs> Amen. And just bringing around what you're talking about, activating your power. The problem with religion, religion will have you feeling powerless. Yep. It will have you feeling worse leaving out than when you came in. Mm -hmm. 
you have more issues and you feel more depressed and more <laughs> down and oh I'm, I'm this I'm so unworthy oh I'm never going to make it I'm, all this stuff just weighing heavy on you making you feel less than versus doing what you're actually supposed to do we're edifiers when you are a true child of the most high you're an edifier we're to build each other up in love. Why? Because God is love. Mm -hmm. And so we're supposed to encourage people. We're supposed to build them up. As it says, restore your brother or sister in love. How are you restoring them in love if, if all you're doing is condemning? If all you're doing is pointing out their, their faults and always telling them that they're never going to be making it. They're, they're not worthy enough. You have to you have to repent. You have to turn from your sin. You have to before he'll heal your land. You know, they're not using that one the most. And so and, and, and you, you it's, it's all that you have to do first before God will do. No, that was law. Mm -hmm. That's already been broken. That was long gone, but religion is still teaching the law and trying to get people thinking that, hey, I'm, I'm going to get to heaven by going by this law. No, that's the wrong answer. No, you don't get there. You get to heaven by believing. Right. Amen. The law, by believing. The law never promised salvation. That's the only way you get to heaven, by believing that the Lord Jesus is our Savior and that he rose Amen. on the third day for us. Amen. 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 Now let's get into some ways that we can activate our faith, our Holy Spirit within our life. Amen. Amen. Let's get into some ways. Get it. I know I started to go there too, too but I was like, no. But we're going to get into some ways to do that. First one is prayer. Prayer is a very strong way, a very effective way mm -hmm. to activate the Holy Spirit within your life. And when you pray, you got to talk to God. Talk to him like you're talking to one of your friends. Amen. 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 Talk to him so that he can understand what you are wanting from him. There is no right and no wrong way. Religion will tell you, oh, you said all the wrong things. There is no wrong thing. You just need to talk to him. He wants to talk to you. God loves to commune with us. Mm -hmm. Amen. He wants to communicate with us. He wants to spend that time with us. Amen. Amen. Let's go to Matthew 6. Matthew 6. I would like to start at five. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Matthew 6, and we're going to start at five. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> and this is Jesus teaches us about prayer. Amen? Amen. Matthew 6 and 5. Oh, yeah, this is the template. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a template. It's not the exact way, <laughs> but it's just a template. But I want you to read this because religion has so long taught us we got to say our Father which art in heaven. Mm -hmm. And that's the only way to pray. You know what I mean? But here it is. Jesus is telling us that's not it. It doesn't necessarily have to be that way. Talk to me. That's all he says. Just talk to me. Amen? Yes. Six. When you pray, don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray publicly on the street corners and in the synagogues where everyone can see them. I tell you the truth, that it is all the reward they will ever get. <laughs> but when you pray, go away by yourself. Shut the door behind you and pray to your father in private. Then your father who sees everything will reward you. When it says reward you, he will answer your prayers. Mm -hmm. That's your reward. He will answer your prayer when you go to him. Amen? Amen. When you pray, don't babble on as the Gentiles do. They think their prayers are answered merely by repeating the words again and again. Don't be like them. 
For your father knows exactly what you need, even before you ask him. Amen? He knows exactly what you need even before you ask him. You do not have to say things and just go around in a circle like it's going to make it mean even the more. Some type of incantation. This isn't the new song on the top chart 100 where they got a hook and the hook just keep running back and forth and that's the only way you know the song. Because you can, I'm, I'm telling you, a regular song, come on, you don't know any of the lyrics. But you know the hook, you know the chorus. Are you repeating that chorus in your prayer because that's what you heard? And you feel that's the right thing to do? But is that prayer answering your situation right now? Is it talking to what's going on in your life? Is that what you're needing to ask God for at that very moment? Because that hook that somebody else taught you, those words, they don't apply to you. They do not apply to you. I remember this song, and it, it's very popular, even the right now. It's um, Deliver Me. That is a very popular song. But when it comes on, um, he says, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, turn from their weak, or seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then, Will I heal the land? That that don't got nothing to do with us. Don't let me say that. That has nothing to do with us. And guess what? It wasn't a prayer for. It was a prayer for that situation, for that time. Amen. 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 So guess what? God hasn't asked you to turn from doing anything. All He asked you to do is believe. Amen. Once you believe, Holy Spirit will work within you and turn you away from those things. Amen? Amen. Go ahead, sir. This is, this is a good class because it's educational. Amen? Amen. And, and here you put us in a place where it was the model of prayer. A lot of people call this the Lord's Prayer. This, this isn't the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer is actually in John. Yeah. First John where he, you know, where he's praying about us. Amen? So this is an example of prayer. And you got to look at who he was talking to. The people he was talking to was who? The, the disciples. They were asking him to teach them how to pray, right? Mm -hmm. And they were under the law. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They were under the law, right? Mm -hmm. Prayer like this. Our Father, in fact, I'm going to do it from the King James because y'all used to King James on this one, okay? Yeah. It says, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Okay, so we know that, right? Mm -hmm. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Mm -hmm. Has this kingdom come already? Yes. 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 It is here. Yes. We're at. In yes. earth as it is in heaven. In heaven. Yeah. This is why, because remember, Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father, right? Mm -hmm. We are ambassadors of Christ. Mm -hmm. And because he sits at the right hand of the Father, guess what we're sitting? At, at the, the right, right hand of the Father. Father. So his kingdom has already come. That's why we have grace. And anytime we need something, we have to receive it through what? Faith. Faith. Yes. Because it's already done, right? Amen. Here, thy will be done in earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Isn't that something we get? Mm -hmm. All right. And forgive us our debts or our trespasses as we forgive our debtors. Mm -hmm. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Verse 14. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Mm. Now see, how many of you know that God forgave us first? Oh, yes, 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 yes. See, but under the law, you had to forgive first in order for, in order for, in order for God to forgive you. Mm. But under grace, God already forgave you. Amen. He forgave you. If you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, he forgave you of your sins of yesterday, today, today and, and forevermore. Amen. He said that he will he said he will remember our sins no, no more. more. Right? So that there's just that one verse passage in verse 14 law will tell you that oh, this isn't for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is not for me. This is what he was telling them. Telling them, hey, 
this is the example of where this is this is your template. Mm -hmm. Now, with us, how do we pray? How do you talk? Exactly. Mm -hmm. How do you exactly. how do you how do you talk to one another? How do you talk to each other? That's how you talk to God. You know, talk to God. God wants a relationship with us. Amen. He don't want us going like the people do in Mecca five times a day, put your little towel out, get on your knees and pray. No, God just wants you to talk to him throughout the day. That's right. He wants you to know, he wants you to know that he's there. Amen. 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 And people and, and people treat God like they, they treat God like something I ain't going to say, but they treat him like they treat him only time they walk like a God, city worker. <laughs> only time they talk to God is when they need something. Amen. I, now, I don't know about you all, but those people that call me and I got family members, only time they need something, guess where they call go to? Voicemail. Mm -hmm. I know y'all probably watching too. <laughs> call me voicemail. Right? And I'm going to scan the call. Why? Because after you realize this ain't no relationship. This person is manipulating me. This person is, is, is using me. And this is how people treat God. In this passage here, even with the prayer, the prayer that you gave, you know, my, um, um, if, yeah, if my people, which are called by my name, how do you know that's under the law? He started off with if. Yeah. It's a condition. Under grace, is God conditional or is he unconditional? Unconditional. Unconditional love. Yeah. He don't start nothing off with if. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yes, because it's already done. Amen, somebody. Amen. 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 This is real good. It makes me think back when I actually did a study on the Lord's Prayer. Um, something I would like to share. Um, as in my growing, or my, I'm still growing. When I was growing in that area, I realized this was just a template because mm -hmm. it does not address if I'm ill. It doesn't address when I need strength. It doesn't address when I need clarity. It doesn't address when I need prosperity. It doesn't address those needs in this this section right here. Mm -hmm. So developing that relationship with God let you know you can use all of God's word, mm -hmm. not just this one section of the book. Amen. <laughs> And last night I was exercising, and God wants you to be his best friend, mm -hmm. his bride. Mm -hmm. I'm getting back in the habit of working out, and last night I did a low-impact cardio. And I was like, Lord Jesus, hey, come grab these two arms and legs and, and, and make them move like the lady's right. doing in the video, because I need some assistance here. <laughs> and it's just simple things, simple things. It doesn't take much. You don't have to tarry. You don't have to be on your mm -hmm. knees. You don't have to be crying. You don't have to be begging. It's just a genuine relationship. Genuine love and care about one another. Amen. 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 Go ahead, sister. Amen. Amen. This is good, man. You know, this is really good. Because I remember when I first started walking. Oh, Jesus. I'm so glad he came into my life. Mm. Because when we hit those hills, all I could say was, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus, I need to make up that hill. I need to make it up that hill. I need to make it up that hill, God. You got you to help me make it up that hill. But one day I started walking recently. And I was in shock. Because I made it up that hill without even asking him for help. And I knew he was there helping me. Mm -hmm. And when I came back around towards um, Margaret Lee, I even made up that little stinky hill that we had because I usually struggle in that area. And I made it up and I made it around. I even ran a little. That was a shocker because I haven't done it in okay. over three, maybe four mm -hmm. years that I haven't done it. And I said, I'm almost there, God. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. And I fell and I tripped. And when I fell in that trick and I hurt myself, I said, mm-mm, that devil not going to make me stop. But wait until this hand gets better, I'm going to start again. <laughs> that's what I told myself. To a stumbling block. Yeah, yeah, because he, that devil, he tries to stop me from what God wants me to do. Mm -hmm. 
And I have to activate <laughs> that spirit to let him know, hey, you ain't stopping me. Because right. I'm going to go back. That's right. Amen. Amen. Go ahead. <laughs> Amen. Um, as Jesus I was talking, it just made me think about how religious folks, they try to make everything seem so hard and out of reach when clearly, I mean, it says it clearly in Philippians 4 and 6. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And then it says, in the peace of God, which pass all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. It didn't say anything about having to tarry, having to talk in tongues, and having to fast for 60 nights and days and, and all this extra stuff that religion tells you to do. It's, it's simply make your request known. Make your request known. Have a conversation. Jump in on this relationship train. You know what I'm saying? Have an open line of communication. Activate that Holy Spirit that is in you. Activate him. Put him to work. Send him up with your message. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's like sending a text message through the airwaves. Use it. Send up your your message. Send it up. But we, we think we gotta do all these strange things before, you know what I'm saying? We, we gotta repent of everything. We Like like the ones that was beside Jesus, uh, the criminal beside him, he, he had to get down and go get baptized and do all this <laughs> other extra stuff before uh, he was able to go up there and all Jesus said was, hey, you'll be there. All he said is remember when you get there. And he did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He said, make your request known. Speak what you want. There's power when you open your mouth That's and right. when you That's speak, right. when you make your request known. Mm -hmm. Not sitting back waiting on God to come and do it for you. Having God come open your mouth for you, having him come put the words in your mouth and on them. You know, you have this work you gotta do. You gotta speak. Amen. And you know, it that's never going to happen. Because as we've just said, the Holy Spirit's perfect gentleman. He's not gonna press anything on you. He's not gonna force you to say anything or do anything. You have to be willing. Mm -hmm. You have to have a willing heart. Mm -hmm. Make yourself available. You have to make yourself available for him to be able to dwell and live within you. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. And you know, as we were talking about prayer, and I'm glad that you went there, because the peace of God will come and guard your heart if you have faith mm -hmm. in what you just prayed about. Amen? Amen. 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 That's what it is. That's what. It, and that's the second point. In order to activate your power to get it going, you gotta have faith. What good is a prayer that you don't believe in? What good? What is that? That makes no sense. It's foolishness. <laughs> you you pray to ask God to do something, but you don't believe that He's going to do it. You have to do that, and you gotta build your faith. Be able to get into a place where you get fed the good word of God. Mm -hmm. So that when you're getting fed God's word, you know what is God's plan for your life. Mm -hmm. I tell you, when I went home this weekend, I did not hear if it's God's will so many times. <laughs> I was just like, if you know, I wanted to say, can you not say that? Do you know God's will for your life? Do you know it? And it's not a sad to say, but even my uncle, he's a preacher, pastor of two churches. And I said, okay, uncle, I love you. I'll see you later. If it be God's will. I said, well, it is God's will because he plans on us to live and not die. So therefore, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> I just couldn't take it no more. I could not take it no more. He just sort of looked at me like, oh, okay. He didn't expect for it to come out. If it's God's will, it is his will. It is his will for us to prosper. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah 29 and 11 tells us that. Yep, yep. It tells us the plans that he has for our life. Mm -hmm. Not to harm us, but to what? Prosper us. Plans for a hope and what? Future. So if I tell you I'm going to see you tomorrow, you're going to say, if it be God's will. <laughs> I do not understand it. It makes me think, do you believe God's word? 
do you believe God's word? Because if those are the words that's coming out of your mouth, you got some unbelief going on. You have some doubt going on. That may be a time when we need to self-check. Amen? Amen. Amen? And as I was saying, we have to get into a place that we get that good word. God's word. Unfiltered. Just straight God's word. Amen? Mm -hmm. And you get there by what? Being in place. You have to get into a place. Faith comes by what? Hearing. hearing. And that is hearing the good news about Christ. Amen? Amen. Hearing. That's an action word. That was Romans 10, by the way, and 17. Faith comes by hearing. There will never be a point where we will come to a full understanding of God's word. Never. Because it's always a new revelation there. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit continuously reveals those things for us. And it's only through the Holy Spirit that we get that new revelation. Because by our understanding and knowledge alone, no. Y'all ever seen that, what's that uh, little game show, Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Mm -hmm. uh, That's how we'll all look. Are you smarter than a fifth grader? Trying to do God's word on our own by not allowing the Holy Spirit to work through us. Pastor will be in here talking to us and we'll be like, this is your idiot test. <laughs> but only through the Holy Spirit are we able to answer those questions. Are we only able to hear from him? Are we only able to understand them? Are we only able to apply them to our lives so that we're living a good life here? On earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Go ahead, Elder. Pastor? Yeah. Mm -mm. Okay. Well, <laughs> Amen. Well, um, that's what I, I, I love about the fivefold ministry. Because they're saying people always seem to forget about the teach part. And how can you do the 2 Timothy 2.15? How can you study, shall I say, proof if you don't have a teacher to teach it to you so you can know what to study, so you can know where to go, when, what, how are you going to know what scripture is for your healing? How are you going to know what scripture is for your prosperity? How are you supposed to know the scripture is for your heartache? How are you supposed to know the answers to your questions? Just like when you're in a, a, a classroom, how are you going to learn algebra if you don't have a teacher there to teach you the algebra? to break it down for you and to simplify it for you. Well, guess what? The uh, the professor was taught and they were taught by way of the Holy Ghost Amen. through the word from God, that, that connection. And so therefore they're doing the same thing, going forth and teaching the next person. So guess what? It's a chain reaction to where the next person is going because they know how to rightly divide the word because they were taught. So now they can go and be a teacher and spread the good news to teach someone else of, hey, this is how you're really supposed to do it by way of God, not by trying it on your own, not by doing our sister so-and-so said and brother so-and-so said and what Bishop said. Not No, but this is what God said. This is how God will bring you through that you don't have to feel lonely. You don't have to feel alone. You don't have to feel heartbroken. You don't have to feel depressed. You don't have to feel beat up and everything. You can feel great. You can smile in spite of. You can have a smile on your face and still be positive, even though in this world it's telling you you're about to be evicted. In this world it tells you that you have cancer. But you know what? You can tell, hey, my God is the great physician. Mm -hmm. It's in his word by his stripes that I am healed. Amen. So guess what? I'm going to speak my victory. I'm going to speak my healing. Uh, it's going to tell me that, hey, I'm living by his riches and glory. Not by my account, mm -hmm. but by his account. So mm -hmm. guess what? I am successful. I can have this. I can obtain that. I don't need to have this in order to be that. Oh, you got to have this degree and this and this. And, no, I got a degree in theology. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. And that's what I need. Amen. And that that degree, mm, Come on. it is better than any associates, bachelors, PhD, in masters. It supersedes them all. 
that neology degree is life changing. Amen. Amen. Go ahead, Dee. I just want to piggyback off of when you were talking about if it be God's will. I came from a church that that's all they said. And this week, the pastor of the church called us again. Told me, y'all tired yet? Y'all coming home? <laughs> said, be God's will. Y'all y'all be here. I said, it was God's will for me to go to Texas. <laughs> and when he tells me it's time for me to go home, then I know. Because that's his will already. I already know. I listen to him. Unless he's talking about heaven. You know, and they know about heaven. If it's God's will. It, it, you know, I'm, I'm moving to action with him because that's what he said. So, you questioning if what he says? Uh, you know, and he didn't know what to say. <laughs> I said, sir, you ain't got to say if it's God's will. He said, make your request known. He didn't say, leave it up to me. If you want something, ask for it in a proper way. He said, make your request known. And also, make it plain. Amen? And that is Amen. You know, when that, that scripture was uh, actually James 4 and like 15, so right here and read down, you'll see when the person, what it's talking about is actually pride. Self, that, that overconfident person, because these because the people were overconfident about what they were going to do, go somewhere to this other place, make all this money, and then come on back and, you know, then they're going to go somewhere else, make all that money. And then that's when Paul had to straighten them out and say, uh, I mean, I mean, James had to straighten them out and tell them, hey, no, if it be God's will, you know, you, you'll be able to do that. You should say, and, and I'm going to read it the way he explains it, okay? You're talking about the boasters. Yeah, because that's what it is. Yeah. You know, we're not supposed to be boasting about stuff like that. Amen. And this is a, uh, yeah, it's a warning about self-confidence. That's what it's saying. And uh, James 4, right? James 4 and 15. He's, I, I guess I'll start at 13. Look here, you people who say to, today and tomorrow we're going to a certain town and we'll stay there a year. We will do business there and make a profit. Now, these were people who were trying to go places and, again, you know, make a profit. They were, they were, and is anything wrong with making a profit? No. But if you have the wrong motives about what you are doing and you're trying to make money off of people's backs that you ain't got no business making money off of, it's going to be a problem. You always got to have the right motives, right? Mm -hmm. So how do you know what will happen tomorrow? So your life is like the morning fog. It's here a little while, then it's gone. What you ought to say is, if the Lord wants us to, we will, we will live and do this or that. Otherwise, you'll be boasting about your own plans, and all such boasting is evil. Remember, it is saying to know what you ought to do and then not do it. Okay? Yeah. So when you put, up, put that, if it be thy will, if you put it all in context, that's exactly what he's talking about. He's, he's speaking against you boasting about you, you know, you know how people, they, they, they boast about their little thing, what they got going on on the side. And they want to boast about it. And, and no, see, because you now have put yourself, God has nothing to do with that. Correct. Mm -hmm. That's all you. Correct. You know, Mr. Carter, you're being Elder, Elder Carter be talking about uh, how we used to say, yeah, you know what? I got this. I got this. I got this. You know what? Yeah, I, I need to man up. I got this. That's, that's the same type of pride that this is talking about here. And that's, but when they were using that scripture, uh, when he was telling them that, the scripture clearly say, look here, you people who say, right? Mm -hmm. Today or tomorrow we are going to a certain town and we'll stay there a year. He was talking to certain people for, uh, you know, certain people for a reason. Mm -hmm. and he was trying to straighten these people out with the pride that they had. Amen. 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 And you know, God is, so amazing. The Holy Spirit really works. Because that leads me right into my next Amen. thing, Amen. which is worship. Amen. You want the Holy Spirit to start activating? You got to give God his worship. Mm -hmm. You have to give him praise. Amen. As he was just saying, it's not about you. It's all about him. It is all about Jesus. There's nothing that we've done. There is nothing that we can do for ourselves. 
We need him completely. All the time. Completely. We need him. We have to sing praises unto the Lord. Give him his due. When you boasting about yourself and the things that's going on in your life, oh, I did it by myself, you give no recognition to Christ. But when you say through God, through Christ Jesus, he has strengthened me. Through Christ Jesus, he has opened this door. Through Christ Jesus, I have been made whole. Through Christ Jesus, I am healed. Through Christ Jesus, I am no longer in debt. Through Christ Jesus, I am who I am. When we do those things and you uplift him, then let us the Holy Spirit know, oh, I can work it out. I can get in here and move around. You just gave me permission to act, to go. Amen. You gave me the green light. Amen? Amen. Amen. Go ahead, Sister Trish. It's what you do. It's what you just described, consider worship. Yes. In a way, any way that you want to answer. Any way that you reference Christ and you spend that time with him, it's a worship. Go ahead, sir. Amen, yeah, it's good. Because uh, a lot of people get it confused. They think when you say worship the Lord, they think it just means you stand in one place and listen to music and you praise him and worship him God. That's not what it means. Worship is everything. In everything that you give reverence to, give it to God. Mm -hmm. That's worship. When you say thank you, Jesus, yeah, that's worship. Yeah. When you give your tithe, that's, that's worship. worship. When you sing a song of praise to, to the Lord, that's worship. When you when you know to do right and do it, that's worship. Mm -hmm. You know, that's worship. It covers such a a large, you know. A multitude. Yeah, a big group of things, right? When it comes to worshiping, and and a lot of people are stuck because they don't know what worship means. They hear the word worship, and they think that means okay. Well, now I need to lay out prostate, and oh, no more, oh, I'll be there for six or seven hours, and and tarrying and waiting, and and what you waiting for? The Holy Spirit was there two thousand years before you even got here. Amen. How you waiting on the Holy Spirit? He's gonna wait on you. Waiting on you. Mm -hmm. Amen. But that's what religion is tell you. Wait for the Holy Ghost. Wait for the Holy Ghost. How are you waiting for someone who already here? Good question. Don't make sense. <laughs> but yeah, worship covers a, a multitude of things when it comes to God. But in everything, know this that it is Him getting the glory. That's why the Bible says, in all that you do. Do it as unto the glory of worship. That's worship. Amen. 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 Did that answer your question? Amen. My time is running short. I know, but I want um, us to. I got one more point that I really want to get out because I want us to get to a place where the Holy Spirit is able to dwell within us. And in order for him to do that too, there's some things that God is saying that has been holding you down. Mm -hmm. And the whole spirit can't get in there because mm -hmm. you got some unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. You got to forgive. Mm -hmm. You see this right here, bottle of water? Mm -hmm. It's filled with water, right? Mm -hmm. Can I pour it and fill it with vinegar? It's already mm -hmm. occupied. Right. It's not going to both. They're not both going to go in this same 16.9 fluid ounces of water. I can't put 16.9 fluid ounces of water and vinegar in the same bottle. Amen. Amen. And know that it's nothing that you have to do in order to be saved, to be to forgive. But when you have when you release. And get forgive. You allow the Holy Spirit to dwell even the more within you. Mm. Amen? Okay. So that he may activate. All right. That's, that's what I wanted to ask. Are, are you saying 
that a person can't receive the Holy Spirit unless they forgive? No. Okay, that's what that's what I thought you were saying. No. Because the person, in order to receive the Holy Spirit, all you have to do is accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Right. That's all you have to do when you receive the Spirit. Because you can't, how are you going to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior and not accept the Father and the Spirit? Correct. It's a trinity, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. You accept one, you accept all three. Right. Amen. 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 I know people tell you that you need to wait and tarry and, 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 and wait for the Holy Ghost. And the initial, and they'll tell you that the initial evidence of you getting the Holy Ghost is speaking in tongues. That's a lie. The initial evidence of you getting the Holy Ghost is love. Yeah. It's love. It's in the book. <laughs> Amen. 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 Yeah, so no, by all means, like I said, that's why I want to make sure I put that out there. That's not saying that's the way that you get saved. I'm saying you're allowing that Holy Spirit to be a, a bondage to you. You're allowing it to hold you back from living your best life. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? That's, that's you holding yourself back. Yeah, that's what I said. You're allowing you, it's holding you back. Because you don't want to let go some things. Are you saying it? Okay, are you saying it's the Holy Spirit holding you back? Or you no, I say you. I keep you. saying you holding yourself back. Okay. <laughs> you sure holding yourself that. back. <laughs> you got to let it go. <laughs> Amen. Hey, man. You don't want to get no sleep. That's right. You're the one that's not sleeping at night. That person that you don't want to forgive or um, love. They sleeping good. They sleeping good. <laughs> Sleeping so good, they got a CPAP machine on, but they snore. Feeling the pain off the walls. Amen. Go ahead, Mr. What does, what is the context of the scripture that says that he gives the Holy Spirit to them that obey? What is the context of that scripture? What scripture are you talking about? When, in the Bible, when it says, where? That's right. So what it's talking about, you talking about where it says, we are witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Spirit who was given by God to those who obey him. You talking about that, right? Yeah. When it says those who obey him, it's talking about those who believe. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are you a believer? Do you believe? Amen. That's all. If if. You can obey a whole bunch of other things, even obey the law. Mm -hmm. Don't mean you got the Holy Spirit. Because you can't do the law and follow the Holy Spirit at the same time. Mm -hmm. yes. So when we look at this word here, who's given by God to those who obey him, it's talking about to those who believe. Mm -hmm. Is that Acts 5 and 32? Yes. yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is that what you were talking about? Yeah. Acts 5 and 32. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So, um, again. It's a good question. Very good question. Good question. Very good question. And that's exactly what Bible study is about. Mm -hmm. Answering questions for those that need and never be ashamed to answer questions, but also answer them by way of the word. Mm -hmm. That's right. Amen. That's exactly what it's about. That's why it says we have to be in a Bible teaching. Bible believing and continuously hearing God's word. Amen. 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 So this is going to conclude my month. Amen. Activate your power. Activate your power. You are no longer weak. You are mighty through Christ Jesus. Amen. Allow the Holy Spirit to move within you and watch you 
swell up. You just gonna get strong. You're gonna be like, he man. Amen. 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 I turn this over to the deacons. Actually, let's close out. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you all so much for joining us as we journeyed this month about activating our power through by way of the word. If you are local, please, please, please come out and learn more of God's word so that you can apply it to your life. Amen. Amen. And I can promise you there's no opinion. It is truly God's word. Amen. Thank you for joining us. And we'll see you next time. Good night.